Hello everyone, welcome back to another video where we're going to be talking about how to use cut control to load programs and double check that they're going to do exactly what you want them to do by using our visualizer. This is a great way to figure out how to use MR1 and to minimize crashes as well as ensure that your program is programmed correctly and it's loaded in correctly. So the first thing we got on our screen here is just kind of a blank screen. You know, how do we load a program first things first, right? So one of the great things about Cut Control is that it's backed by the power of like a Windows operating software. This is a full machine you have backed behind your software. So with what I do, I come to our Load Program section, and if I click this button here, it opens up a window. Now let's start at the beginning. This is really the beginning of our Windows operation. And so one of the great things is that I can just save all my programs to my computer, and then I can just access them right from here. So if I go to my documents, and I come down to my posts uh, folder that I have set up, then I have all my posts that I have ready to go. So I can just pick one and load it in. And there's my program. Now that's one of the nice ways to just uh, write and load things locally. You can just do it right there on that computer. Um, it, you know, it's a lot easier than trying to write everything on a flash drive save that over, move it over to your machine, and get that saved separately. It's a lot easier than using a floppy disk. I mean, don't laugh at that. Uh, back in one of my first jobs at a machine shop, we had a machine that had a reader for a floppy disk. I mean, we even had a machine that had a reader for a punch card, where you would punch in your program to tell the machine what to do, and then feed that paper into the machine. So. We have come a long, long way since then. Now it's super easy. We have things such as Google Docs. Uh, your utility is similar to that. Google Docs is a great way for a team or even an individual to work on programs cooperatively and to save them to the internet. And so, for example, I could uh, write a program here on my desk. I could save it to the internet and then I could just walk over uh, to our shop uh, come up to MR1 and just access that program through the internet. And so I could send it to my boss or my buddy and he could take a look at it, he could make a couple changes and then just save it instantly and then I could pull it up. No flash drive, no hard drive on the computer, no floppy or punch card. It's all just done digitally, super easy to access, super easy to change. So it's a great way to collaborate with people. And so we have our program up here through whatever means, hopefully not punch card. And we're just going to kind of zoom in here and take a look at what we got. So we have our tool uh, as set up by our G54, which is why it's currently red. We also have our other options that we can do. We have our work coordinate system here that's set to zero. That's set through our programming that we did with our cam side of things. And then we have our tool lines. And so we can notice here that orange tool lines are feed lines. And what that means is that the tool is going to be moving along at a pace that we set in our program. So if we tell it to move 10 inches a minute, or 50 inches a minute, 100 inches a minute, as long as it's feeding at some non-rapid movement, it's going to be an orange line here. And that we can change with our feed override section. So if we wanted to slow the feed down on our program a little bit, we can adjust with our buttons here, faster or slower or faster. We could reset it, we could go by small amounts, reset it. Anything that's feed controlled is orange and it can be controlled by the override. All of our blue lines here are rapid movements. And similarly, we have a rapid override that can change our rapid movements. This is especially nice for setups. If we are doing a rapid down towards our part and we wanna be extra careful that it's not gonna crash, we can change our rapid override. And so what we can do is we can take a look at our lines and we can really compare them to what we have in our cam software. We can double check and we can make sure that everything's going to be cut in a certain way. For instance, I know that I am spiral of ramping down. It's going to cut through. It's going to spiral out into this square pocket that I have set up here. And then it's going to do a cleanup. And I know all that just by looking at these lines. I can tell that it's coming down, it's going out, and it's cleaning up just how I want it to. Uh, it's doing a little facing operation here at the top, and it's also cutting the perimeter of my part. You know, I can see my chamfers here, 
big old chamfers, chunky chamfers on the corners. And I can see that it's doing it in two depths. Now that's very important because if I were to see this instead, you know, that that's at one depth. That's going to be probably too big of a cut and that can cause several issues. Like that could mess up my tool or it could give me a really bad finish. So that's, that's a red flag right there if I see this. Now, on the other hand, I could also notice more lines than usual, and that's not quite a red flag, that's more of a yellow flag, but that means that my program is going to take longer than I was expecting. And now that might, now going slow is not a bad thing, but if you do want speed, and if you do have maybe a time crunch, then going slow can be a bad thing. And so this is something, it's more of the principle of it not doing what you want it to, that's the whole reason why we have this great visualizer is to make sure that your program, your software is gonna be doing exactly what you have in your head and exactly what you're expecting. And so it's more about doing how you, how, it's more machining how you want it to machine and making what you want it to make. And so we can see all this from our visualizer up here as well as our program down here on the bottom. I can tell I have the correct program loaded in and I can scroll down and to go through all my lines of code, basically. And so up here at the top, we just kind of have our basic safety line um, from our post process here that we use at Langmuir. We'll probably have that available to you guys so you can take a look at how we do it. We've kind of had time to hone it to make it kind of a really perfect setup for our machine. I can come down here and since I'm a little bit familiar with G code and M code, uh, what I can do is I can take a look and I can see that the setup of the machine is going to be doing what I want it to. You know, it's going to be spinning at uh, 8,000 RPM. It's going to be spinning in the correct direction. It's using G54. The coolant's coming on. We're wrapping down to a safe position. So it's G0, which is a rapid move. G1, which is a feed, an orange line. G0 was my blue line. And it's going to be feeding at 100 inches a minute, which is what I told it to do and then it'll come down and then at G3, which is a counterclockwise arc, is going to be feeding at 20 inches a minute. And so I can go through the first steps of my program before it starts getting just horribly chunky because it's machine generated, computer generated, it just gets super chunky. I mean, we're talking 16,000 lines of code in total just for this. And so I can make sure my setup's good I can make sure my overall part is going to be good and that's going to help me really reduce and really cut back on the number of mistakes or even the number of crashes that I'm going to have on this machine. We always want our number of crashes to be zero. I know no one's perfect, but hey, if we have something to aim for, then that's, that's good. And so that's pretty much a great way to use our visualizer. So now you can go out and you can load your program and you can run it into your machine. You can save it to your floppy disk or punch out your little punch card and feed in the paper, however you want to do it, now you can. And you can make sure that your machine is going to be doing it correctly. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below, or if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, look forward to our next video where we're going to be coming out with even more helpful tips and tricks, and we're going to be breaking down cut control even more to make you guys masters of this, get you up and running as fast as possible. Thanks for watching.